research for this book, um, I was thinking about how does employee experience and employee engagement fit together? Because the really interesting thing about employee engagement is that we have never invested more time, more money, more resources into employee engagement programs. I mean, we spend billions of dollars every year. But around the world, employee engagement programs are not going anywhere. They're not improving, right? Our employee engagement scores are not improving. And it's precisely because of that adrenaline shot concept. So the way that this all fits together is that we need to start with the experience of our people. It's the employee experience that then creates an engaged workforce. And then, after you have that engaged workforce, then that is what leads to the ROI. So the big problem that we've seen inside of our organizations is that we've been stuck here. We've been stuck trying to measure employee engagement and influence employee engagement, but really what we don't understand is that it starts here. This is what happens first. If you want to have an engaged workforce, you have to start by investing in the experience of your people. So what is it that some of the world's leading organizations have figured out? You know, if you go to any bank, you go to any supermarket, you fly on any airline, the process is always the same, right? I mean, the way that you buy groceries, the way that you check in for a flight, all of these things are the same, regardless of which company you work with. Yet somehow, some organizations are consistently able to deliver better experiences for their people. How is that? And there's one thing that the world's top companies have figured out. And it's based on this concept uh, that a psychologist by the name of Thomas Gilovich created. And what Thomas Gilovich realized is that if you invest and if you buy a physical good, for example, an iPhone, over time, your satisfaction will go down. So over time, if you invest in a physical good or a product, your satisfaction will go down. But what Thomas Gilovich realized is that if you invest in an experience, over time, your satisfaction goes up. And that's really what the world's top companies have figured out is how do we make it feel like when employees start working here, they didn't just buy a physical good, they invested in an experience. So how do we start to think about that and do that? Now, the good news is that for every organization around the world, every single employee experience is a combination of just three environments. Three environments, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Now, to try to understand this, I researched and I looked at 252 organizations around the world. So a lot of companies. And I grouped all of these organizations into different categories of how well are they doing when it comes to investing in employee experience. And as you can see from the chart, only 6% of companies are doing an amazing job of investing in employee experience. Only 6%. And these organizations include a company like Cisco, like Microsoft, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Airbnb. These are some of the organizations who are doing an amazing job of investing in employee experience. However, you can also see that 20% of companies are doing nothing, just nothing at all. Another half of the organizations are doing just a little bit. Right? They're just doing a little bit, barely enough to get by. But the reassuring thing is that 23% of companies are doing very good. Not quite amazing, but they're doing very good. But again, the scary thing is that only 6% of companies are doing an amazing job of investing in employee experience. So there's still a long way to go. So uh, one of the things that I looked at is I tried to understand what's the ROI of investing in employee experience. In other words, why should your company do this? It's one thing to say, oh, it's nice, it's good for our people, but does it actually drive any kind of business value? Is there any ROI of investing in employee experience? 
And the answer is yes, a lot. So I looked at ROI uh, across a couple different areas. The first thing that I looked at was, do companies who do an amazing job of investing in employee experience, do they also appear on other best of lists? In other words, best companies to work for, best companies for HR, smartest companies, most valuable companies. If you invest in employee experience, does your company appear on these other lists? And again, you can see, depending on the list that we look at, they appear on it two times as often, four times as often, up to 40 times as often. The second thing that I looked at was business metrics. Do organizations that invest in employee experience have higher profit? Do they have higher revenue? Are they more productive? And again, across the board, we can see these companies have 40% lower turnover. They are on average 24% smaller, but they are also more productive because they have higher revenue, they have higher profit across the organization and also per employee. So not only are these companies making more money, but they're doing so with fewer people. That's what productivity ultimately comes down to. And the last thing that I looked at was stock price performance. Do organizations that invest in employee experience have better stock price performance? And I compared these organizations against the Great Place to Work Institute, best places to work for, against the Glass Doors, top organizations to work for. I compared them against all sorts of different lists. And here, too, we see organizations who invest in employee experience outperform every other kind of organization that exists and outperforms by far. It's not even close. So clearly, investing in employee experience delivers some kind of ROI to the organization.